Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And based on the fact that a lot of people seem to resonate uh, with my video I made about SQL Mesh, kind of another alternative to DBT, I thought I would come back around and make kind of a more direct comparison video between SQL Mesh and DBT um, to really highlight some of the differences between the tool two tools. And I'm gonna focus here on DBT Core compared to SQL Mesh because they're both free tools. DBT Cloud, while it does offer some of the same capabilities that SQL Mesh does and that you might hear me not specifically talk about today, that's because I'm only gonna focus on the free offering and compare what you can get free out of the box with DBT Core and then what you can get free out of the box with DBT or with SQL Mesh, not DBT. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. Let's look at both these tools and give you an idea of the capabilities of each so that you can decide which one you want to start using. So starting with DBT, you know, DBT, and it's kind of become the de facto standard, uh, much like Airflies, for defining SQL transformations in a sequence to run those transformations within cloud data warehouses. So as the ELT motion has become so much more popular as now cloud data warehouses are able to run and transform their data much cheaper than the ETL systems of your uh, now, Databricks is powering much of <clears throat> those transformations by leveraging the underlying Snowflake, what, uh, BigQuery, Redshift environment, um, and transforming that data in the database. Um, and it's really at its core, pretty simple tool. It's just an ability to write modular SQL queries, um, you know, to find SQL queries in kind of a, a function-esque way, similar to how you would uh, with Python. Um, and then string them together to build complex data models, um, and then also layering in you know, version control and some simple kind of environment control features around that. Um, and so DBT Core is really just emphasizing you know, SQL as a main language for transformation um, and being really just you know, the way to run all of your SQL transformations in a, in a, a scheduled and kind of programmatic way. Um, so it's a really simple tool, but the simplicity is kind of that power uh, because that allows users to build module, modular and reusable SQL models, build in data quality tests or data quality checks, and then also manage data dependencies and have these automated workflows of dependent SQL uh, operations. So you can take really complex SQL operations that before you might have had to run manually or you know use another tool for. Now you have those you know sequence of SQL scripts. You build out your DBT project, um, and then pull one up. So here you have an example of both a DB, or so first DBT model. So in this case, a model is collecting data from three tables, appending them all together into one unified customer's table. Um, and this is what DBT is. It's a sequence of these SQL uh, scripts that you then can choose relationships of within this project YAML file, determine how they're going to you know, consume and produce data to each other. Um, and then you also can create these ma uh, macros, which are essentially are SQL templates. So things like, hey, instead of needing to write out the entire drop table logic, I can just call the drop table macro and it'll drop whatever table I point it towards. Um, so allows you to you know, have SQL be modular, reusable, so avoiding you know, just kind of copying and pasting code, and then also running sequences of those SQL models um, together in, in an automated fashion. Um, but DBT core out of the box doesn't really have um, any kind of visualization tool or way to actually do the workflow orchestration here. Um, so a few different limitations here um, within DBT Core. Uh, number one, it is really dependent on SQL-centric approach. Um, you know, if you're trying to implement complex logic or calculations, that's gonna probably be easier in languages like, like Python. Um, trying to do everything in SQL it's just you end up having some edge cases that SQL just isn't really well suited for. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, having SQL or everything, not necessarily always the best thing. Um, and it also is dependent on you having data warehouses, uh, primarily cloud-based data warehouses. It does have support for other environments like, you know, uh, some other SQL databases, but its support for environments like streaming platforms or non-SQL databases is, is pretty much non-existent. Um, it really requires some hack rounds to have it work in those environments, but you know, also you don't necessarily, it's not necessarily the best suited um, for piggybacking like a Spark environment or something like that. Um, it also 
has a bit of performance overhead. Um, so obviously, you know, it is cheaper now to do these ELT motions and transform data within data warehouses, but that doesn't necessarily mean, no, mean you know, you want to just go crazy and, and run a lot of really complex transformations. Um, you're still gonna wanna be careful and conscious of query performance and costs. Um, so, you know, while it does unlock a lot of capabilities, you can also kind of rapidly get ahead of your skis um, and start trying to do too much and then really just overload your, your data warehouse consumption. And honestly, a lot of companies are dealing with, with that exact issue right now. Um, and then also, it doesn't really have any integrations with other kind of workflow orchestration capabilities. So there's not really a concept like a sensor or saying, hey, this DBT job is done, now go trigger something else. So that's where tools like Airflow come in really, uh, well, come in handy a lot because, you know, they're able to integrate and kind of provide the orchestration features around just, you know, SQL scripts um, for DBT and connect it to the other parts of the pipelines. Like, hey, I want to query an API and ingest that data and then transform a DBT. Like, DBT can't perform the ingestion step um, or the extraction step. So it need, you need the, you need other tools working in parallel with DBT and DBT isn't necessarily built out of the box to actually do that. So you're gonna to need to work DBT into some other kind of tool. Um, but end of the day, you know, that's not really to say DBT is a bad product at all. Um, it's got a ton of advantages, you know, version is really easy to collaborate with. If you're experienced with SQL, it's very easy to get started with, um, very familiar to most data analysts. Um, it also, you know, like you saw, modular, reusable um, components, and you also have the option to integrate data quality tests into those pipelines as well and make sure, hey, as I'm transferring my data, I'm checking that data integrity along the way. So that's DBT. Now let's move on to SQL Mesh. So whereas DBT Core is, you know, pretty much the SQL scripts on their own, and then the idea is you buy DBT Cloud, and that's where you get some of the more enterprise capabilities. SQL's mesh is really built to be an all-in-one platform out of the box um, and you know just kind of more of a data operation solution rather than just kind of sequence SQL scripts um, and it's a really cool tool um, I really like it it is more open source in my well, not a more open source but it's got more in its open source offering than I think dbt does and it also use it allows the use of things like Python um, so it's a newer tool, so it's not, you know, as proven in enterprise. They've got some cool logos on their website, but, you know, obviously take it with a grain of salt. Um, but it's really a more comprehensive and flexible solution for building and managing SQL-based data pipelines. Um, and then also allows you to integrate Python into SQL Mesh for more complex logic, testing, um, and, and really just the additional capabilities that having Python in there allows. Um, and really extends kind of again outside of just like, hey, SQL scripts and standalone SQL scripts like DBT Core does um, and focusing more on, hey, bringing in things like flexibility and coding languages, bringing in more, you know, data quality testing, de actual deployment capabilities. Something I didn't really met, touch on with DBT Core is like you need to build your own environment for that. Um, and it's you also need to build and maintain it if you're not DBT on DBT Cloud. SQL Mesh is very much a containerized uh, application that, hey, you deploy this, it has everything included. Um, so some of the biggest, you know, I would say, you know, advantages of using SQL Mesh are, now, some of the advantages that this approach brings, number one, that hybrid approach I mentioned, combining the strengths of SQL for, you know, those declarative transformations with Python for kind of the more high level logic, allows you to define much more complex transformations using P Python scripts when SQL alone is insufficient, which can happen, especially if you want to do calculations as part of a query or transformation. Um, and this hybrid approach really helps provide, again, that flexibility and expands the range of possible transformations and use cases that SQL Mesh can support. Um, it also offers much more comprehensive testing um, and validation features beyond the standard checks that are available in DBT. So it includes things like automated regression testing, the ability to validate entire transformations against historical data sets. Um, and that makes it much more suit, well suited for, you know, use cases where you need to validate, you know, against historical data sets and catch errors really early on um, or over a, a really long period of time. 
Um, and then also you have much more deployment flexibility uh, than dbt core. Um, SQL mesh is designed to kind of, I kind of go into this in my video and where I set it up locally, but it's very much designed to be a self-contained application. You can deploy it on your local machine. You can deploy it into an on-premise database, a cloud data warehouse. Um, and that makes it really well suited for diverse architectures <clears throat> or you work with kind of more legacy data sources as well. Um, it also has built-in scheduling and orchestration features. Um, so it reduces the need. So we'll, you'll probably be better served by integrating with a tool like Airflow for kind of more complex orchestration capabilities. It at least has a unified experience where you can, you know, kind of manage some of the ingestion pipe piece. You can also manage your DBT pipelines. Um, and it, it has built out integrations to things like Airflow. So it's not really just centered around only working with a data warehouse, but really with some of the tools around a data warehouse. Um, so nice kind of difference between uh, DBT Core. And then also out of the box UI um, and you know really kind of more of a platform for developing versus DBT Core, you're really just running SQL scripts and then triggering them with bash scripts. Um, so it's not that visible of an experience, you're kind of monitoring it through your database um, versus this is really you know, meant to be a development studio um, for you to build out your data pipelines. Um, however, with all of these benefits, um, this hybrid approach does offer flexibility. It also increases complexity. Um, and so that can be an issue um, where you know, if, if you're not f familiar or proficient with Python, that can be a barrier for a team that's you know composed comprised mostly of SQL analysts um, and vice versa, and then it's also got a newer ecosystem, so it's relatively new, less battle tested, doesn't have as mature of an ecosystem and community, and so the documentation and community support are not nearly as extensive. Um, and it's going to be harder for teams to kind of troubleshoot issues and also hire and find resources that are familiar with SQL Mesh. Um, additionally. Some of the additional kind of integration overhead that SQL Mesh provides, if you're already using Airflow and DBT together, you kind of already have that. And you also have best in class orchestration versus, you know, SQL Mesh, it's nice that it has built in orchestration capabilities, but they're not going to cover every use case. They're not going to cover more complex enterprise grade scale. Um, and so swapping out SQL Mesh or swapping in SQL Mesh for something like Airflow just doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, but if you use it in tandem with Airflow, then it also, you know, there's a lot of overhead within SQL Mesh that you're running that you're not really getting a lot of use out of. So you got to kind of think about that. Um, and then also the with that deployment flexibility, you're probably going to face some performance trade-offs based on the environment. And so optimizing pipelines across various platforms um, is going to require, you know, additional effort and expertise. Um, so those are the kind of two platforms in a nutshell. And then I really just want to sum this up with talking about some common use cases um, and you know, give you which one tool I think is better suited to each. Um, number one, for just like an out of the box, really simple SQL transformation where, hey, I just wanna have some SQL transformations that I'm making every day manually and I wanna turn them into just you know, something that runs on a schedule. DBT Core, is a good idea for those teams. Um, you know, if you're primarily SQL based, you're relying on just, hey, I gotta run this query in my data warehouse every day. It's really simple, it's easy to get started with, it's relatively cheap to run, um, and it's pretty modular to add on more pipelines um, and you know, add on additional capabilities. Um, and then also it integrates well into things like Airflow. Um, so if that's your use case, DBT Core is a good idea. Um, on the other hand, if more complex kind of hybrid workflows are more your use case, uh, where you have complex transformations, you're doing calculations as part of these queries, um, you know, fu custom functions. That's where in it, having the Python-based operations uh, and functions that SQL Mesh provides is going to be a lot more powerful for you. Um, and you're gonna benefit much more from kind of SQL Mesh's flexibility there. And it's also really good for tools that, you know, companies that are just, hey, I want an all-in-one tool for transformation, testing, and orchestration just for my SQL pipelines. SQL Mesh doesn't really require a lot of additional tooling around it um, to get started with. And then it's also, and kind of for development and CI/CD integration, if you're looking for, you know, really seamless integration with CI/CD pipelines, um, SQL Mesh has a lot of built-in support for automated testing and deployment, so it can leverage your existing testing and deployment frameworks. Um, however, a lot of people like to use DBT Core, uh, triggered by GitHub Actions, GitLab, CI/CD. I personally hate that approach, but if you're a team that is purely focused on SQL and 
you know, you want to use CI CD and like code changes to run SQL queries, you can do that. But I think SQL mesh is much better integrated with uh, kind of, you know, letting CI CD pipelines work for propagating code and managing deployment of code versus DBT is like in a weird gray area or some people use GitHub actions to actually trigger their DBT models. Um, and I just don't think that's a good idea. Um, and then finally for scalability and performance, um, for really large scale complex data models that are running in the cloud, DBT core is gonna be your most mature performance optimized solution um, that's gonna scale with your data warehouse capabilities. So it's going to be able to scale to really, you know, the massive terabyte scale that enterprise solutions require. Um, and then if you, however, need to be able to deploy an on-prem environments, um, you know, not only on cloud environments, more on kind of like data streaming light tools um, and a wider range of like VMs, SQL Mesh is probably a better option for that because you'll have better flexibility in where and how you can deploy it. Um, but that's all I got for you today. I hope this has kind of given you a framework for these two tools and how you can evaluate them against each other and what use cases they're each best suited for. Um, so I hope you learned something today. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.